Hi everyone, welcome back to these processes from the Project Management Body of Knowledge. This one in particular we're looking at is sequencing the activities. So we've created the activities that will deliver the scope of the project and now we need to put them in sequence depending on their dependencies or you know other things that need to be completed before they happen and that way that will help us create our schedule diagram and the overall schedule for our project. As you can see, where it fits into our planning process group is we've defined the activities here and now we just need to put them in a sequence. Uh, and you know, once we put them in a sequence, a few things will be revealed. Maybe something can be completed um, or maybe something can't be completed until something else is completed and vice versa. So you know, there are a few different ways that we'll look into this as part of defining our schedule. Sequencing activities is the process of identifying and documenting the relationships among those project activities. And you'll see more about that with leads and lags um, and also precedence diagramming method, um, which we'll go into in this process as well. The key benefit of this process is it defines the logical sequence of work to obtain the greatest efficiency given any of the constraints that we know about, you know, such as something that needs to be completed before we start one of those activities. Here's an overview of sequence activities. So every activity except the first and the last should be connected to at least one predecessor activity and one successor activity. So here's our activity here and, uh, and you know, we need one that goes before it and one that comes after it, unless you've got the last one or unless you've got the first one as well. So logical relationships should be designed to create a realistic project schedule and that's where our precedence diagramming method will come into it. It may be necessary to use lead or lag time. This is a key concept for your PMP exam as well and that's between the activities to support that realistic project schedule and the sequence activities process concentrates on converting the project activities from a list into a diagram to act as that first step to publish the schedule baseline. So we'll have the activities, then we'll have a beautiful diagram, and then that is, is what we're really using to lock our schedule in at a place in time so that we can't make changes unless we have an official change request in the future. Inputs, tools and techniques and outputs that you'll see are the project management plan, project documents, enterprise environmental factors and organizational process assets. Uh, the tools and techniques that we're using are the precedence diagramming method. So what comes first and what comes after a particular process or activity. Dependency determination. So what needs to be completed first and what needs to be completed after. Leads and lags. Can we bring this item forward or do we have to wait until, you know, for a few, for a certain amount of time after something is completed? That's a lag and to bring it forward is our lead and we'll see a bit more about that as well. And of course our project management information system, uh, our overall system for compiling all the project information and knowledge. Outputs are the project schedule network diagrams that we've seen. So however we determine, however we decide to show that, what's the, what's the actual schedule diagram, and project documents updates. So activity lists and milestone lists will all be updated as part of this particular process. The sequence activities process will have a big input into our project documents as well. So schedule network diagrams, activity lists, milestone lists, and all of those sorts of things. Let's look at the inputs in more detail. The project management plan uh, will be an input. So the schedule management plan, what's the process for gathering our schedule and putting it together? And of course the scope baseline, what are the, what's the actual scope that we're delivering, that activities list that we've taken from the scope baseline. Those activities will go into uh, sequencing those activities now as well. Project documents will be an input, so the activity list that we created activity attributes, so any of that extra information um, for our activities, the milestones list, what are the large milestones or features that we're delivering over time um, to certain dates, and the assumptions log, so what assumptions are we making, you know, is, it, is this part going to be easy we think, or this part is going to be hard, or we have access to this resource, or we don't have access to this resource. Enterprise environmental factors, uh, you'll see our government or industry standards 
our project management information system as well, scheduling tools and organizational work authorization systems. All of these sort of ways of work in an organization, you know, the politics of how things get gets done. Um, but you know, how does the work get done in that organization? What are these things that you're using um, or that are already existing? And organizational process assets like templates, um, processes, guidelines, and our lessons learned repository. So previous lessons learned from other projects. Let's look at the tools and techniques in a bit more detail. And we'll see a few new things come through here. This is our precedence diagramming method because what has to precede or what has to succeed something. And it includes four types of dependencies or logical relationships for your activities. Finish to start, where we've something cannot start until this one has finished. So the way you look at this as well is you've got the first one and the second one. So this is our second activity and this is our first activity. So the second one here cannot start until the first one has finished. Looking at that, if you've got finish to finish, the second one cannot finish until the first one has finished. And looking at the next one, this one, the second one cannot start until the first one has started. And this last one here, the second one cannot finish until the first one has started. So start to finish. You will definitely see something about this on the exam uh, as part of your schedule or you know, sequencing activities. So it's good to know that um, you know, it's just done in that sequence of the first one and the second one. So the second one cannot start or finish until the first one has start or finished. And this is what they look like as, a, you know, as an example. Activity A needs to finish uh, before activity B can start. Uh, so start to start, activity A uh, has to start before activity B can start. Finish to finish, activity A needs to finish before activity B can finish. And start to finish, activity A has to start before uh, activity B can finish over here. So dependency determination and integration. There are a few dependencies that you might come across. There are mandatory dependencies, discretionary. De so that's something that absolutely has to be you know, done. That's a definite thing. And you're definitely dependent on that for your activities to start at a certain place. Discretionary dependency, uh, dependencies where you know, it's, a, it's up to someone's opinion. So you know, that's, that's just a dependency. It might change internal dependencies to the organization or to the team and external dependencies. So maybe market forces or political forces that you're going to see that might, uh, that regulations, for example, that you might be dependent on. Dependencies has four attributes and two can be applicable at the same time in the following way. So mandatory external or mandatory internal, for example, or discretionary external dependencies. So that's how that works. If, you, if it's an absolutely set in stone, mandatory, internal dependency, then that's something that you need to be aware of. Leads and lags you'll come across as well. Now a lead is the amount of time the second activity can be advanced or can be brought forward for you. So the best way to look at this is on a Gantt chart sort of style. And if we're using lead to, to bring an activity forward, we're saying that there's a little bit of time here and this activity can now be brought forward. So now it's happening at the same time. And maybe this activity can be brought forward as well. And so now we're not using all this time over here, but we're just using all of our time. We've used the lead time for these activities to be so that they're all done at the same time. We've brought them forward. Now lag time is if we've got our activities, let's say they start here, but this one might, the second activity might have a dependency. So this one actually can't start until this one is finished. So now we have to wait and that's the lag time. So we actually have to wait. Uh, this one cannot start until this one is finished. And so the lag is all of this time in between here that we're sort of wasting in a way. But you know, it's just part of those dependencies that we have to be aware of. Lag time is we have to wait for something to happen. Lead time is we can bring it forward and we don't have to wait. So we can actually use some of that existing time. 
project management information system. So of course, this is our overall system, including the tools and the processes uh, of how we're gathering project information about the activities and the schedule and the cost and the scope and putting that into the overall system and how is that information dispersed around the project. Now our project schedule network diagram is probably one of the biggest outputs for uh, sequence activities and that's a graphical representation of the logical relationships so also known as dependencies among the project schedule activities. So we've got our list of activities and now we're turning that into a beautiful diagram um, and this one can go here and but this one has to start before you know after this one starts and that's where our dependencies are coming in and now we're putting it into a picture so someone can see. Here's an example of what that looks like of course and um, so you know we've got our start over here and our end and these activities can be done in sequence. Uh, same with these and same with these. Uh, but uh, you know they, that's the sort of sequence of how they're, they're going and we're making it visual so someone can see. We will see more about the, the scheduled network diagram as this is how we complete the critical path method as well. So there's definitely going to be more information on that in the key concepts videos. Project documents updates will need to be updated with our activity list, our activity attributes, so any of those dependencies, really key. The milestone list might change and any assumptions that we've made along the way in order to sequence those activities. And that is the overall process of sequencing activities as part of the project management body of knowledge.